Welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. This is the first of at least a few guides I have for both new and somewhat experienced players. Today I'll be covering single fire versus full automatic fire. Looking at the effectiveness of both and discussing when and where to use one or the other. The bottom line is that the most common mistake I see players make is using full auto fire modes in mid to long range engagements. Using full auto with high-end recoil modifications is much more viable and results vary from gun to gun. But my general rule of thumb is to use single fire exclusively in long-range engagements as well as many mid-range encounters. When starting out new, having a limited amount of options to reduce recoil of your full auto gun, it is my opinion to almost exclusively use these weapons in single fire and only pop them in full auto if the environment exclusively affords close quarter combat situations. Let's take a look at Bullet groupings from shooting at the side of this building here. I'll be using the walls in between the windows so that we can go examine the bullet groupings and compare results. So we'll start out with a very common new player gun, the AKS-74U. If we look at the stat line on this, it's got a pretty low vertical recoil at 90, just to stop, but a huge horizontal recoil pattern, 268. First we'll use full auto which as I said before is a mistake that I see players make probably the most. Remember once you ADS it's also important to hold your breath and also understand that shooting from a crouched standing and prone position is going to change and alter your recoil patterns. With prone being the least recoil, crouched being second least recoil and standing giving you the highest recoil pattern as you don't have enough body behind you to help absorb the impact and the blowback of your weapon fired. So here we go. Let's check our select fire by holding left alt and B. We can see down the bottom right, it's in full auto. So we're gonna hold shift. As you can see, that was very wild. Now let's switch over to single fire, hold breath. I got a 60 round mag on that, so I did lay in a lot more shots. Let's go look at our results. As you can see, the full auto with the AKS-74U with zero attachments had some shots after the initial burst land up there, 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 there. Then it started to kind of get a little better, tighter. Had some shots over here. But if this is what I was trying to hit, I didn't do a very good job from the range at about that bush right there. Compared to the single fire shots, you can see a few of them landed high, but look how tight this grouping is compared to using full auto. When shooting full auto, initially the player has most of the influence when controlling recoil. This can be done by getting a feel for how much to counteract the recoil, which is typically an initial high vertical jump, especially with guns like the M4, which I'll show you here shortly. But know that since you're playing as a highly trained PMC or private military contractor with lots of experience in shooting guns, the game will actually begin to better control your recoil the longer you continue to spray. It's got a built-in algorithm to help you while you're spraying to eventually hone that in and be a little bit more effective. But our results here speak for themselves. If you're using a gun with limited modifications to help with the recoil, to me it's a no-brainer to almost exclusively use this in single fire. However, when breaching a, a building, close quarter combat, that's when it's appropriate to pop it into full auto. As you can see here, if there was a person standing right here, pretty small grouping, as the bullets didn't really have very much room to start having a very wide cone like we saw outside here when we shot from about, uh, I'd say that's probably about 50 meters. So let's have a look at the, uh, the M4. So I'll use uh, this wall here for single, uh, for full auto, and I'll use this wall for single fire. So we're in single fire. So we're not shooting as fast as we could with the full auto, especially uh, with the M4. But like I said, precise 
more accurate groupings. It's going to take down an enemy much quicker and be more effective because you're actually going to be hitting them. So let's have a look at the full auto spray. The M4 is notorious for having that really high jump. So you can see a lot of bullets would have missed the target. That's a waste of ammunition, waste of money. However, it was a quick burst and a lot of them were on target, but let's compare the results. Just a couple missed shots here. Very tight group there. Very loose group right here with the full auto. Let's see if these bullet shots over here have disappeared. They have, so we can come back to this wall. So when you're using magnified optics, such as the LK in four times, I recommend only using this in single fire. The, the reason I recommend using only single fire when using magnified optics, you'll actually lose sight of the target due to the recoil burst. We're gonna zoom in, hold breath. Super tight group right here. Very effective shots for the most part. Yeah, 90% of those been on target, maybe even more. It's just probably just that one right there. And uh, here's our full auto recoil pattern spray. Uh, very wild. A lot of these would have missed. Uh, a lot of them, however, would land as well. Remember, the PMC will actually begin to take control. Modified AKs, you can actually get away with running in full auto and doing tap burst. Just by single clicking, even while in full auto, the rate of fire isn't high enough and the sensitivity is low enough to where you can actually treat full auto AK by tapping like you're in single fire. So it's not as important as say like an M4 or other guns with high rate of fire. And it is noteworthy to say that some guns just doesn't really make sense to use in single fire, like SMGs. But even then, if the range is far enough and you have a jump on the target and you're about to lose sight on them, still, if you could train that left thumb to hit, pop that B button, that select fire button, whatever you have it set on, you could still land more shots effectively. But like a P90 and the MP7, MP5 and the MPX, they have just such smooth recoil patterns it's like like a butter so you can really get away with them just being on full auto pretty much all the time however i have found opportunity here and there where i'm trying to like land a headshot with an smg where i have actually popped it into single fire and taken a couple shots so here's what we're going to do we're going to shoot just to the left of the door for full auto and then we'll see maybe just to the left of that door for single fire up top. All right, so we're in full auto. I'm gonna do my best to try to control the initial recoil. All right, so now we're at a range where my principles actually apply to even the RPK. Going up top with single fire. Let's go check out our results. Here's our full auto spray. It speaks for itself. I uh, probably would have been able to drop a target, but used a lot of ammo. Some of them, I believe, even hit up high, like that one right there. But just look how wide that spray pattern is right there. If the target was right there, then again, might have been able to take them down. Would have been maybe enough shots to be effective. But look at what we were able to accomplish with single fire. That's a very, very tight group with the exception of a couple. We'll start out with the M4. So standing with our back up to this tree right here, if you're using a four times scope and you're trying to land shots, highly recommend only using single fire. So we'll shoot right here. So we're, gonna we're going to ADS, hold breath. You can already see that grouping right there, pretty tight. Let's go to full auto. We'll go just over to the right over here. All over the place, all over the place. Let's use the one times magnification. We're in single fire, so here we go. Single fire bullet spread. Pretty tight considering the range. I think that that would have been plenty effective to take down a target. I'm gonna change the optics. So 
This is the four times. This is the one times magnification of the L can. You can do. You can change those by doing left alt and right clicking. So we're gonna stay with the one times, and we're gonna switch to full auto. It gets a lot better the longer you're spraying because your PMC will actually start to hone in that recoil pattern. Wider spread here, but that initial jump was pretty big, which is common for the M4s. So you got a wider grouping here. It still would have been effective using the one times magnification, but still in my opinion, single fire, tighter grouping, more effective. They both would have been effective, but you would have had to have used a lot less bullet to have the same stopping power effect in a shorter amount of time than it would have taken for the full auto. Unless, of course, one of those full auto bullets happened to tap them in the head. Point is, is that it's less reliable. So let's switch over to the RPK. Okay, here's what we'll do. We'll shoot at that house. Pretty long range shots here. I would definitely use single fire on this. All right, to the left of the window, full auto. Let's catch our breath for a second. And I'm actually crouched here, so we'll do a test on that too. But since I crouched there, I'm gonna crouch here as well, of course. Full auto. Damn, the RPK is just still silky smooth at full auto. But as you can see, the single fire, much, much tighter grouping right there from the crouch position. Full auto, still would have been effective but look at how wide that bullet spread is. I think the results speak for themselves. Now I'm gonna to switch to the AKS-74U. Okay, we're in full auto, and we're in a crouch position. So ADS, hold breath. Full magazine dump. Okay, single fire, right side of the column on the wood. Okay, I got a 60 round mag in there, so we shot a little bit more than 30 rounds on that. Let's go look at the results. So full auto, I was trying to only hit the wood. Um, as you can see, I hit the fence a good bit. Single fire. I hit the wood a lot more. And we'll shoot at the side of that barn right there. Ooh, that wasn't very good. Wow. I was trying to uh, shoot the wood there. And good goodness. That is a wide spread. That would have been very ineffective at that range. It's also worth noting that ammunition types in and of themselves have an impact on your accuracy percentage and recoil percentage. Since we were using the AKS-74U and the RPK as an example, let's take a look here. The BS round actually has a minus 3% accuracy and a 10% added recoil to it. 15% added recoil to the 7N39 Eagle Nick high pin ammo. And then you'll notice that the PRS, the worst ammo that you can run, has a minus five accuracy. I don't know why. <laughs> they should just leave this as zero, zero. It's already really bad. 60 flash damage, 14 pin. It's not even going to go through uh, the 3M armor, Paca, or the new class two armor. Uh, but you'll also see the sporting round has a minus 15% recoil and a 10% added accuracy. And the U.S., which I don't know what tr that translates to in Russian, but if I, I just like to think of it as ultra slow. But what it basically means is subsonic, meaning that it travels less than 305 meters a second. So it doesn't break the sound barrier. And once they do a sound rework, suppressed shots will actually reflect what they would really sound like in real life, meaning all of these other ammo types for the AK series would actually be a lot louder since they do break the sound barrier and that is the primary cause for bullets being as loud as they are. So once you get down below 305 meters a second, you will actually get below the sound barrier and it should sound like how suppressors sound in the game currently, which will make subsonic ammo much more viable. The other thing that will make subsonic SP and HP ammo, HP which has a five percent increase in recoil what will make these ammo types that are currently not very useful in the meta 
as soon as they do a rework on the armor zones, meaning where the armor plates would actually be in the body armor, chest rigs, etc. These will be much more viable to use. You can shoot somebody in the side or under the armpit or pretty much wherever the plate isn't located. Each armor type will probably be a little bit different. Uh, these ammo types will be much more viable in addition to the subsonic being actually sounding like it does currently and these other ammo types being much louder than they are when run through a suppressor. I highly recommend having this link which will be in the description below as a bookmark and if you have two monitors I always have this up on my second monitor so that I can quickly refer to it. For example if I spawn in and do a scav run I have a shotgun and I check my chamber and I got I've got the 12 gauge hollow point slug superformance which does 90 190 damage but only has two penetration however it has 140 percent accuracy and a minus 15 percent recoil making this a very accurate round so again this link will be in the description it's the official escape from tarkov docs google spreadsheet which is always kept up to date i bookmarked it like a year maybe a year and a half ago and it just continues to just be updated on itself not ever having to search for it just always having it bookmarked as a quick reference the changes to the armor zones is actually right around the corner with a new content patch as seen in the new work in progress notes released in Battlestate games recent tweets as soon as they get the back-end server issue resolved now I've got an AK-74 545 by 39 assault rifle, which has a stat line exactly the same vertical recoil as AKSM4U, but 235 horizontal recoil as opposed to the 268. Let's take a look and see what happens when we fire in short bursts in fully auto. We'll shoot at the left shed in fully auto burst and the right shed in single fire burst. You can see a pretty tight group down below, which is where the shooting started, and then it rose up with each burst started and rose. I tried to stabilize and it rose. With the single fire, I had a couple shots that I fired while the rise happened, but then it started to get it tighter. Let's throw a few more shots down range in single fire just to get a larger sample size. We're using BT ammo just for consistency. Every single mag has BT ammo. It has a 5% increase in recoil. Single fire. Let's shoot uh, on the right side. Very tight group. Lined up at the post. Full auto, left side of the barn. Not too bad. That would actually have been pretty effective. But still, the group that was over here for the single fire was much tighter. Now, what's the difference between standing, crouched, and prone? Okay, we're prone just on the grass line here. Crouched, we'll go in the middle. Standing up, we'll go to the right. Prone, most of our shots were here. We'll have to redo the prone. Looks like some of the bullets disappeared as these bullets started taking up the space in the middle here. But you can see our standing shots were all over the place. Crouch was much more controlled. We'll shoot at the left barn. So being prone made this gun a lot more viable to use in full auto. However, it still wasn't as tight as single fire. From the crouch position lined up with this bush here we'll shoot bursts at the right side of this shed now to the left we'll do single fire it speaks for itself just for shits and giggles i've brought out a p90 let's shoot it in single fire on the right side upper part of the barn Super tight group. Full auto, let's shoot the left barn. So while our suit, while our single fire was indeed tighter, and there pretty much was like no recoil, the full auto is still extremely effective. That's still an insanely tight group. Close quarter combat, really tight grouping. Further we back up, so it didn't take much at all. So the moral of the story, new players it's when you get your hands on a gun that doesn't really have any attachments to help mitigate the recoil only use these guns in full auto when you're in close range
I wouldn't want to use anything full auto beyond maybe this point right here. Even still, it's a bit iffy. It's just the problem with uh, close quarter combat and why you want to run it in full auto is if the other player has a full auto gun and perhaps better attachments, they can react quickly and s spray you down. So close quarter combat, you don't want to give them very much time to react. This is a tight enough grouping to hopefully be effective. So in summary, it is in my opinion that one of the greatest mistakes that I see players make is by using full auto when trying to do mid to long range engagements. Trying to pop scavs in the head. If you miss and you're just still in full auto and you're just kind of doing little burst shots, you're gonna miss a lot more. You're gonna spend more money on ammunition. It's more effective to use it in single fire. If you don't believe me, you can check out any of my other videos like the uh, the most recent one uh, where I do a solo run on interchange. I'm actually running an AK-105 on that match with some pretty high-end recoil mods. And yet much of that video, I am in single fire. But as I move around the map, depending on the situation, I'm popping in between full auto and single fire depends on where I might anticipate a target or I might see a target. It took me a while to get used to training my left thumb to pop the B button, which is what the default fire select option is. And a lot of times if you forget, you can hold left alt and B before entering a new environment. So when breaching, I like to do a full auto unless I know that where I'm entering just has just a bunch of wide open spaces, but my initial breach, I want to be on full auto, just especially if I know there's an enemy close by, but once I get in, say I see an enemy over there off in the distance, I'm going to switch it right back into single fire. I know that uh, this test, this testing could be more exhaustive and more consistent, but I hope that it was enough to show you the results of full auto versus single fire at mid to long range and for you new players uh, using guns that you don't really have access to you haven't unlocked the traders you don't have the attachments and even if you do have the attachments it just takes experience and getting used to the guns and knowing how to use them what you can get away with full auto versus single fire and i hope this helps increase your survivability your effectiveness and your enjoyment when playing in PvP. So it can be extremely frustrating to think that your shots should be landing, but they're not. And it's simply because you're in full auto and your recoil spray is having a very wide grouping of bullets. You won't hear us. He's down. He's down. Oh, another scab front, front side, right. Right, scab down. Yep. So without further ado, this is APOC Gaming. Thank you so much for being here. I do hope that this guide has been helpful. And if it has been helpful and perhaps improved gameplay, made it more enjoyable, and it's maybe allowed you to kill more people, and survive more leave a comment and let me know and of course if you have any more questions you can also leave those down below lastly please consider subscribing to my channel for more content on escape from tarkov thank you